San Diego launches into phase three of the statewide plan to reopen California, even as the death toll from coronavirus reaches a chilling milestone. Today, hair salons and barber shops were allowed to reopen their doors, as well as houses of worship, all with significant modifications. Gyms and fitness centers are still waiting, hoping to receive guidance on reopening soon. News 8's Richard Allen has more on the continued push to bolster the lagging economy and the push back by some health officials. Well, that's right. These reopenings, while welcomed by so many, also fall on the same day that the death toll to coronavirus nationwide surpasses 100,000, the same number of confirmed COVID-19 cases statewide, prompting some to question whether California might be moving too quickly. We are moving at a very rapid pace through the reopening. As San Diego continues to advance into phase three, hair salons and barber shops Wednesday once again opened their doors to customers with some significant safety measures now in place. I haven't worked for two and a half months. It is extremely, extremely hard. Kim Tran Kennedy, owner of Kim Salon in Rancho Penasquitos, is thrilled to be back at work. A job that now requires face coverings for herself and her clients who are seen through staggered appointments to avoid congestion. Also allowed to begin Wednesday, religious services. We can't just flick a switch and go back to how it was before. To curb the spread of COVID-19, services are capped at 100 members or 25% of the building's capacity, whichever is smaller. Still not open, San Diego gyms. Although in a Zoom call with fitness industry members Wednesday, Governor Newsom said guidelines for reopening could come in the next week or so. There is an urgency, and I'm just not sure if that was fully portrayed in the short amount of time we had. Although some health officials question if California isn't allowing enough time to roll out these statewide reopenings safely. Making changes too frequently leaves us blind. Santa Clara's health officer cautions that at least 14 days, ideally 21, are needed to realize the health consequences of these reopenings. The pace at which the state has made these modifications um, is concerning to me. San Diego County leaders say triggers are in place to monitor the health effects of these moves to reopen the economy. And if they are severe enough in change would, would guide our, our necessity of, of moving backwards. Uh, none of us want that. We want to continue to move forward and we want to continue to embrace each one of these reopening phases responsibly smartly and safely and along with barber shops hair salons and religious services also today one-on-one -on -one sport instruction was also allowed to resume countywide back to you all right richard thanks while many businesses are celebrating being able to reopen the list of others shuttering their doors keeps growing detour hair salon in encinitas and hillcrest and mother saloon in ocean beach announced today they would not reopen. News 8's Abby Alford has more on how we're seeing one door close and another one open. Mother's Saloon has been a favorite spot here in Ocean Beach for nearly a decade. And while it is boarded up during this time to keep the vandals out, it'll stay that way. Unfortunately, it's another business having to shutter its doors. Mother's Saloon sat at 2228 Bacon Street for nearly a decade. It's known as a music venue and sports bar. But you see, even if they were to reopen, customers wouldn't have sports to watch. That's a big draw for us. You know, what would we do? But it's not just the lack of sports that forced Mother's in Ocean Beach to close permanently. We just couldn't secure a lease in, uh, I would guess, call it COVID times, that would uh, work for us. On Wednesday, owner Colin and Shelby Wickersheim announced on social media that it would close. 22 employees would have to be laid off. There's been an outpouring of support from nearby businesses and more than 200 comments from supporters. We had some good times here. Mother's is the latest to shutter its doors. Their soup plantation, the farm to table whisk and ladle in La Jolla also closed. And from restaurants to hair salons on Wednesday, Detour and Hillcrest and Encinitas also announced that after 22 years, it would not reopen. <laughs> Now, while some businesses are struggling, LA's popular Dave's Hot Chicken's grand opening is Friday in Pacific Beach in a 2,000 square foot space. The hottest Nashville chicken outside of Nashville itself. San Diego locals opened the newest celebrity franchise. A spokesperson says that since Dave's is known for fast casual takeout and third party deliveries, it can survive. They also have a tremendous following and lines for days. Still, the dining area will be closed for now. Customer experience should be seamless and extremely safe. And while we see one door open and another close, as one supporter put it, hopefully the comeback is better than the setback. OB, thank you. Amazing time. Me and my wife and the staff, 
We love you guys. Thank you. An estimated 7.5 million small businesses are expected to close permanently nationwide in the next few months. We have resources on our website at cbs8.com. Click on the help button. Thanks, Abby. The city of San Diego is working to support struggling local artists. Here in San Diego, we've had a thriving arts and culture scene, uh, and we want to ensure that it continues, um, and we continue that this scene is even bigger and better than when we get on the other side of this. One million dollars in public and private money will be split evenly between a couple of initiatives. One supports local artists through direct purchases. The second offers commissions by asking up to 18 local artists to create new location-specific pieces for public spaces across the city. Uh, the White House and Senate Republicans are calling the House stimulus bill dead on arrival and say their version does not include direct payments to Americans. Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said the federal government must slow down and be mindful of the national debt. If there is another bill, it's not going to be $3 trillion. It is going to have liability protection in it. And uh, I think it needs to be oriented around jobs and kids. After meeting with the president, New York's governor repeated his calls for more federal funding to state and local governments. The number of coronavirus cases across San Diego is inching towards 7,000. County leaders reported 101 new cases today out of just over 3,000 new tests. That's about a 3% positive rate. The total number of confirmed cases now stands at 6,983, with 5,023 of those cases recovered. Six new deaths were reported today, bringing the county total to 255. The county and Rady Children's Hospital are teaming up to test thousands of children and their families for COVID-19. Today, the two groups announced the COVID Collaborative for Children. It will provide testing for Rady's parents, patients, and caregivers, regardless of symptoms, at appointments and urgent care or emergency room visits. The initiative will start with about 400 daily tests, but will ramp up to about 2,000 per day. And another partnership for the county, this time with San Diego State University. The University School of Public Health will recruit and train about 110 community health workers to increase their contact tracing efforts. These workers will talk with people who may have come in contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19 and then advise them to self-quarantine. They will then follow up later to check whether or not these people did develop COVID-19 symptoms. When it comes to California schools reopening, expect a learning curve for everyone. We expect that there will be a balance of instruction between distance learning and in-class instruction. Today's state superintendent, Tony Thurmond, outlined some of the changes being discussed. He says not every school will start at the same time, but once they do, students and staff will be required to wear face masks practice extreme social distancing measures, and have their temperatures checked daily. California schools are expected to reopen in the fall. They've been closed for weeks, and today some major local attractions made their case to reopen this summer. Today, representatives from SeaWorld San Diego, Legoland, the USS Midway Museum, and the San Diego Zoo presented a joint plan to the county for reopening by July 1st. They say it follows CDC guidelines and that they're ready for phase three of the governor's plan to reopen California. The plan calls for temperature screenings of employees, masks for everyone entering the parks, and reduced capacity. Verona Resort and Casino reopened today with new safety measures. Temperature checks and face coverings are required. Table games are limited to three people per table and every other slot machine is turned off to help out with social distancing. Smoking isn't allowed and the buffet is going to stay closed. A former San Diego County Sheriff's deputy convicted of assaulting more than a dozen women has been released from prison after serving just six months of a 44 month sentence. According to the Sheriff's Department, Richard Fisher was released on May 15th after the Superior Court sent an order with his corrected custody credit. That can include things like credit for home confinement. Last September, Fisher pleaded guilty to four felony counts of assault and three misdemeanors. 
A second suspect is under arrest tonight in connection with the shooting of a Coronado team. This as the victim recovers from yet another surgery. Today, Coronado police arrested 18-year-old Alejandro Guzman and charged him with robbery. Earlier this month, 18-year-old Jacob McHenry was shot twice in the back while trying to sell a necklace. The high school senior was readmitted to the hospital recently due to an infection. Yesterday, he had surgery to have the bullet removed. We're told he is in stable condition and hopefully on the mend. Two San Diego pet stores were cited for selling illegal puppies today. San Diego Humane Society law enforcement officers cited pups and pets in Santee and Broadway puppies in Escondido for not selling rescued animals. The two stores now have to stop selling animals completely until they can prove they're sourced from shelters or rescues.